Thank you for joining us for Reminiscing with History Makers. Today we're here with Natalie Duran, Adjunct Instructor for APCO. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay. So for starters, when did you join APCO? Uh, I joined in 1980. I was working for the fire department, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue, and I had a chief that said, I need you to stuff envelopes back in those days. And I said, why? He says, you need to work till at least 7 p.m. with no pay because we're having APCO International uh, Conference that we're hosting at the Fountain Blue. Now, if you know anything about the Fountain Blue, everybody wants to go there. So, of course, I did. I said, I'll join. Of course I will. So that was my first conference, the Fountain Blue, wow. at the APCO International. And could you describe your agency position there and brief responsibilities? At the time that I, was, that I joined? And currently. Oh, I see. Uh, well, I joined Miami Day Fire Rescue as a dispatcher back in 1976, went on to get promoted as a supervisor, and then went on to manage the communication center until I retired in 2012. Great. So obviously that first story, is there anything else or anyone in particular that drew you to joining APCO? Uh, it was, I have to give credit to my chief at that time, uh, who was the hosting uh, the international in his city. So for me, it was being at the Fountain Blue and then getting to meet so many people from the public safety world. And I was hooked ever since 1980. I've been to almost every conference except for one. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Can you describe your act APCO activities at the state chapter and national level during your tenure? Well, <clears throat> after 1980, I went on to uh, join the Florida APCO chapter. And I remember when I walked in and I looked around, they were all talking about law enforcement. And I turned around and I said, is there anybody here from the fire side? And they said, you're it. So I became the chair of the fire service committee uh, for the Florida chapter and went on to have displays in every um, conference that we had in the state of Florida. Uh, joined the, after the fire service committee, joined the training committee and after the training committee, I am still, even though I'm retired, I chair the, um, the Florida TURD, and I'm a state coordinator. So I still do that work with the Florida chapter. And I still am very active with them in training and being part of them and enjoying them as well. Yeah. So it's all good. Any activities in there jump out as a favorite for you? Oh my goodness. Training. It would have to be training. I mean, I love everything else that's being done. I like the... Uh, uh, people are on top of things and abreast of the changes in technologies that we have today and, and, and especially in our government. But um, training will be it. I mean, I've been doing training for the APCO chapter, uh, even at the state level, uh, deploying dispatchers for telecommunicating emergency response task force. And we've been doing that for a long time. So it's all, it's, to, to, I would think to, it would be for me the, the training and taking care of our brothers and sisters in public safety. Yeah. How would you say your APCO membership has had a direct effect on your career in the public safety communications? I'm going to tell you that I, it's what I tell all my students when I teach. APCO has made me who I am today. I cannot think of a better place where you can actually find out what is going on around anywhere in the United States and that you can't get this in a book. Just the experience of others has made me who I am today. APCO is, uh, I am APCO. I am APCO. What would you say you like most about APCO as an organization? The people, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where else can you actually sit somewhere and, and network with so many uh, different uh, brothers and sisters that work in public safety? It's such a small group of us that can do this work anyway. Mm -hmm. And to be able, the honor of having to be, you know, be able to meet them and, and talk to them and, and find out sometimes that the grass is not greener on the other side. And other times when you wish you would have, you know, that you would have some of the things that other uh, emergency departments, uh, communication centers have. Uh, but the idea of, of having a group of people in the United States and even abroad, I've taught in Mexico and, 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 and gone to Germany and taught there 911, and they're all the same. Speak they're all different languages, but they're all the same. And it's about caring. Caring about it and taking care of the people that we serve. Right. 
Uh, seeing both sides of that, what would you say APCO does better than any other organization? Uh, again, being part of APCO, uh, the training component, I would think, is, is bar none. Bar none. I, I've, I've trained with other people, I've trained in different companies, and there's no one like us. You know, who else can give the information, the accurate information about what's going on than a dispatcher in committees giving that information to the rest of us so we can put it in writing and teach it. So there's nobody else. <laughs> do you think there's anything that APCO would need to do in order to move forward and stay current in the industry? I can't think of anything right now. I would like to think, though, that we do have some people that do have vision and they can see where we're going in technology. Uh, you hear it all the time here when you come to the conferences. So I would like to think that I have people that are open-minded uh, to embrace new ideas that come from the dispatchers and telecommunicators and call takers that are actually doing the job. So, and, and I love their, they just have this new program with the CPE, the Certified Executive uh, Training that they have. And I'm um, one of the second uh, classes that I graduated from. And that's a great turn where you're actually um, having people all the way from the front line and developing them all the way to the leaders that, they, that, that, we, that, that we need in, in, in our future. That's all good. <laughs> Is there anything that stands out as a significant contribution during your time in office? As my contribution? Personal, yeah. Uh, well, I have to tell you that I, I have a, this is, so there's a, uh, yes, and that's the telecommunicating emergency response uh, teams. Last year I had the privilege, well it's not, not just last year, it started back in 1992, but um, my state has been um, one of these where we've been hit with hurricanes and I decided that dispatchers needed to be taken care of, not just police officers and firefighters. And today we, our state has deployed in many incidents from, from as far as 92 to 97 with, with the uh, wildfires uh, to hurricanes in 2004, we had four of them, and we've actually deployed several police and fire and EMS dispatchers around the state. Hurricane Irma just came in last year, and we actually helped Collier County Sheriff's Office and the Monroe County Sheriff's Office by sending them dispatchers that worked in other PSAPs to go and help them out for about two weeks. So it's nice to know that we have some people who are able to help our own brothers and sisters in public safety during their worst times. So I still do that, and hopefully we don't get any hurricanes this year, but and we, we, we need a break, but it's all good. Absolutely. Well, thank you for everything you've You're done, welcome. and thank you for joining us on thank Reminiscing you. with History Makers. Thank you.